behind Christianity. That is part of the mix. Every lie has to have some truth in it for the lie to go further. Okay, they have combined paganism in this Trinitarian doctrine by saying three separate persons. No, Emmanuel came in flesh. Yahweh came in flesh. That's why his name is Jesus. Paganism is 100% polytheistic. Polytheistic kids means multiple gods. Paganism and heathens means multiple gods. Poseidon, the sea god, sun god, this god, this culture. They might lift one above the other, like Ephesus had Diana above the others, okay? Because uh, they're effeminate, dandy, metro men, okay? And so they have a woman god as number one. Um, mm -hmm. Multiple gods had, had to be mixed in with Roman Catholicism. Let me repeat it. In Roman Catholicism, they had to mix this in. They're trying to convert in paganism, and they're into synergism. So they, they had to mix this in. So they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But they had some Christians battling the good fight for about 100 years until they totally became Roman Catholic. There was about a 100-year period there. You know, that's why, that's why we watched that documentary last week and had John Christensen hammering the Jews, and he was only like 15, 20 years before Augustine. That guy's great, you know? I mean, he hammered the homos really hard. He's like turning your man card, you know? I mean, like just great one-liners. I've read a lot of early church fathers. I'm going to do a series on that in about 12 months. But, um, yeah, Tertullian, Justin Martyr, you know, that one. And then you, you stop right when you get to about year 360, 370. Prior to August, and just stop. Don't even, don't even read any more there. It's just all trash. But some of them are trash in between them. Uh, Clement of Alexander, he's trash. Clement of Rome is all right. Clement of Rome is in the Bible. That was Paul's disciple who took over the church. Clement of Rome. Clement of Alexander? Yeah, pretty much everything I is all of Alexander was bad. <laughs> okay. So they had to mix in polytheism, but they had some true Christians there that would not back down to Jesus is God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, and they clash and clashing. So they're like, we got him. He's one of the three, but they're one essence. But he's, but you know, it works like this, and they just blah, 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 blah. Double speak. Now, I don't believe sal it's salvation pending. I don't believe Trinitarian is salvation pending, unless one of three things. One, they don't say Jesus is God. They, they lower him down below. If they don't have him equal as the Father, and he's just the Son, just the Son, and he's not God in flesh, they're going to hell. That's salvation pending. Okay? Um, um, two is if they say you didn't believe in one God, are going to hell for believing that. Because they're condemning the just. If you're con condemning the just at that point, then you're, then you're going to hell. I want to go to Colossians 2.9 which is the other strong Trinitarian one. One of, the, one of the strongest ones in the whole Bible. And obviously if they say Jesus did not come in the flesh, if they say Jesus didn't come in the flesh, that's Gnosticism. Oh, and the third one, uh, the Trinitarian is salvation pending, is if they lift up Mary or anybody else to co-equal Redeemer. Of, of God. And that's what they say. They say, Mary is at the right hand of God. He'll put, she'll put in a good word for you. Pray to her too. Synergism. Add that to it. Okay? That is salvation pending. That's an insult to God. People that pray to Mary, dead saints, are going to hell. Uh, but Trinitarianism by itself, if they don't have those three things, yeah, of course they I used to be Trinitarian. But I always said Jesus is God. I had a yellow sign that said Jesus is God for the last seven years. Okay? And I never said when this Pentecostal is going to hell. I'm like, hey, they dress modest, you know, they got long hair. I mean, you know, I don't know why they aren't ever out preaching. Why don't these guys ever go out preaching? And some of them oppose us out preaching, which is always suspect. But, you know, we've had Calvinists oppose us. It's, it's good to know which battles to battle for and stand for. Colossians um, 2 9, right after Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. For in him. This is talking about Jesus in verse 6. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So clear. In Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He, he is God. He is God. It is a simple thing. It doesn't need to be all, all complex. Now, Trinitarianism has a, has a, has a real far-reaching leaven uh, when it comes to the family and church relationship, the church and government relationship, and the government and family relationship. Big brother, family, your family, your kids, and they say, well, you own them, 
it, it has implications on these things. When you really boil down the, the root of these things and these, and these conflicts between these three ordained institutions. And reminder, God has three ordained institutions. The church, the state, the family. Church, state, family. Okay, three ordained. They have separate responsibilities and sanctioned power. Quickly examples. The church excommunicates people. Families don't. They don't excommunicate someone. Then they might kick them out of their house, but they might kick them out of the church. Maybe they got kicked out of the house because the kid's doing right and the dad's doing wrong. Church has power of excommunication, not families. Government doesn't have power of excommunication. They don't even claim that one. <laughs> they claim a lot of power outside of their jurisdiction. They don't even claim that one that they can excommunicate. That's a church one. Church does ordination, who's deacon, who's elder, who's pastor. Not government, not family. Government has power to kill people. Church is not killing people. We're ministers of grace. The government's the minister of the sword. Okay? Government kills people. Capital. Families don't kill people. That's Islam. Okay? Families don't kill people. What, what, well, then what does the family have? The family spanks the kids. The church will never do that. And the government should never do that. Well, the government will just molest their kids. But, you know, they're not supposed to do any of these things. So, you know, there are separate spheres of authority and responsibility of these two things. But there's conflict in these. And the root of it is Trinitarianism. No, no, and I'll prove it to you. I mean, you think about this deep and you meditate. It's like, wow, the living is far-reaching. Okay? Um, so these Trinitarians, they'll say three different persons but one essence. Therefore, your filter of God in these three areas are going to be off because you're going to think of the phrase separate but equal. Separate but equal. That's what the phrase is going to come to mind. Because they say, oh, Jesus is separate but equal. Holy Spirit is separate but equal. This, this church is separate but equal. This government is equal. That was your first red flag. Is the government equal to the church? Okay. Even if it's a Christian government, is it equal to the church? No. Because if the mayor or general sins, he gets excommunicated. Question, can an unsaved general be the general of a Christian nation? Can an unsaved mayor be the mayor of a Christian town? No. But when you start thinking separate but equal, it leads to a lot of problems. The Bible doesn't teach separate but equal. It teaches God's church is supreme. There's dignity and respect for a Christian civil government. There's dignity and respect for a godly family. Absolutely. A real church would not ever step over its, its boundaries of authority in, into those two areas. They don't tell the mayor how to do the street lights or anything. That's their job. Don't tell the dad how to discipline the kid. That's their job. Okay? Um, but, the, you know, as the honest, we, we know the Christian has to be government. And we know the high places of authority have to be with, with Christians. So if the mayor backslides, he has to be kicked out. He can't be ru ruling it if he's an adulterer, ho homo, or murderer or something. And so the church is the delegated authority over, over those areas. That's why they have excommunication power. And it's easy to see when you see that there's one God. Here's the foundational question. Who's entrusted with this truth? The Bible's the truth. you got three options. Who's entrusted to be a steward of this truth? The government, the church, or the family? Churches are made up of families, absolutely, but not the entrustment of that because they don't have excommunication power, ordination power. Unless you're an idiot and you go self-ordain yourself. Okay? The government doesn't is not to be the steward of the truth. So the steward of the truth is entrusted by the church. Okay? And not the government, not the family. So when you, you think separate from equal, it's going to bring confusion because who has the ultimate sanctioning of power? Who can do the sanctions? Who has the ultimate sanction power? You, you, your kid might get you mad, but you don't have the power to kill him. You don't have the power to excommunicate him. You don't have the power to, to call your son the, you know, the, the, the next pastor or the elder. No, it doesn't work like that. The same, all things have an ultimate judge sanction. Otherwise, it's anarchy. And even then, you have warlords, and they have ultimate power. Law is inescapable. So it's going to end up somewhere. And this separate but equal messes things up. Yeah, let me ask you, sir. Is your wife equal to you? Does, does she make the decisions of the house? Both the men are shaking their head no. Hey, moms, is your kid equal to you? They, they going to set the tone? Hey, kids, is your dog equal to you? 
Okay? It's a little further analogy. I know it doesn't quite fit in the you know, but just to, so the kids can get it. No, they're not. There's always a flow. There always has been a flow. And when you go separate but equal, it's led to every single, not every single, tons of the wars and conflicts and things. So like, well, wait a minute. Well, who, who's, who's above? The, the, this one or that one? Okay? Now, some people might say, you know what? That sounds like popedom. Not, no, not at all. Because the pope is the bishop of bishops. And there never can be a bishop of bishops, ever. A real Christian country would never try to be a bishop of bishops on other Christian countries. Mm -hmm. Leave them alone. They'll rise or fall themselves, just like most churches, I say, leave them alone. Leave them alone. No bishop of bishops. Okay, The church would be led by Pat and have elders and, and the flow, and God's Christian country would not try to rule over another Christian country. He would never do that. He'd say, no, no, leave, leave them alone. You talk to each other, counsel, maybe debate if you want to, but you're not going to, you know, try to rule over. That's what the Pope had did. That's what the first bishop of Rome did. He's like, I'm over the bishop of Antioch. No, no, no. Who says? And they just did it over and over and over until they finally got enough apostates to do this, and the church had to go underground for 1,260 years. A real Christian knows a good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit, and each country's fruit will show over time, and people can move. They can move from one Christian country to another Christian country. And they'll say, oh, they're actually following the law of God. They're actually executing them. Well, they're actually out of a stoning pit. Yay! They're actually doing this. They're doing that. Tons of people flock to America, not just to escape religious persecution, but they wanted to live under righteousness. They wanted to live under righteousness, too. Not just leave the persecution... More people move over to Boston area, and they, they, they had theonomy going and down in these other areas. Now, some move for economic reasons. We get that. But some of them are like, no, we want to be the city that shines upon a hill. That, that is our nation quote for a reason. Don't let you hide your candle under a bushel. And so the separate from equal is not the same with the husband and the wife. Okay? It's not the same authority and power with the husband and the wife. But the leaven of Trinitarianism leads to these things. There's one God, his name is Jesus Christ. And when there's one throne in heaven, not two or not three, one throne that we will bow down before. And it's leaven and it has these, reach, these, these implications that go in different directions now. Uh, I don't want to get into this long, but natural civil law. We talked about it earlier. It's the basis of our American civil law now on most of the Western world, and they call it natural. And it's just another way of saying humanistic reasoning. <laughs> humanistic reasoning. Because now they'll say, oh, no, it doesn't matter if it's poop and it stinks and all that. We think it feels good, do it. We think this and that. It's just humanistic reasoning. But that's how they don't base it off of Bible law. But that's Roman Catholicism. They're the ones that invented natural law. People don't know that. It came out of the Roman Catholic Church. It's a huge leaven. That's why half our Supreme Court judges are Roman Catholics right now. I'm glad they're overturning some abortion in some states. That's great. But at least I have all Protestant judges in this country for hundreds of years. Purgatory. Last one in closing. Purgatory is Catholic leaven. It leads to the thousand year hell doctrine which slanders the justice of God. The thousand year hell is one of the most humanistic, stupid doctrines ever. It removes the fear of God, and all that hold it aren't saved. Josh in New Mexico, Jerry in New Mexico, Ted, Seventh-day Adventist, these different people, they're not saved, okay? Um, it's the glory of God that he punishes the wicked, like Levi did in his prayer today. And we thank God for help. You just want some pedophile to just, like, get shot and die. Maybe he burns for, like, five minutes. Oh, five years, 50 years, 50, 999 years, and that's it? No, I have the heart of God. I want him burning forever because he's going to sin forever. The Bible says, let the filthy be filthy still. Okay, the nature doesn't change on, on judgment day. You either have a new heart now or you don't. Okay, your nature is not going to change on the day. Either is theirs. They're going to sin for eternity, which is why they need to be punished for eternity because God is eternally holy and the thousand-year hell and purgatory, which is a variation of it, is, is slandering the justice of God. It's putting the love above justice, and they're equal. They've all, love and justice have always been equal with God. Always been equal. And the cross proved that. Because on the cross, he fulfilled the justice 
thy law demands. We sang it in the Rock of Ages today. Law demands justice. True law always has a penalty. And he says that fulfills all thy law's demands. And love. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have the leaven of natural law? Do you have the leaven of Trinitarianism? Do you have the leaven of synergism? Do you have the leaven of futurism? Every head bowed. Everybody pray.